on the beach the only place to read your emails and tweets it's tuesday september 15th happy payday to you semi-monthly payroll peeps out there i think now <laughs> would be the perfect time to go to the athletic.com slash no dunks and subscribe to the best sports writing in the world and podcasts for this cost of one dollar a month one dollar one dollar I'm convinced it's a typo. I think somebody screwed up at The Athletic. There's no way this should be a dollar a month. So take advantage now before they realize their mistake. Get in dollar a month. Theathletic.com slash no dunks. I'm Jay Skeets. Alongside me, as always, we got Tass Mellis. Oh, hey, everybody. Hey, Tassie. We got the bearded one, Trey Kirby. Hey. 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 Hello. The international man of mystery taking it to the max. Lee Ellis. Friends. Mm. <laughs> Last but not least, making the magic happen here is JD. Hello. There he is. And here we are. Thanks so much to everyone who sent in questions this past week. Keep them coming. Email us, no dunks at theathletic.com or tweet them in at no dunks inc. Or you could use that hashtag no dunks. So many good ones. Again, Tass. Let's just go and dive right into this and make another classic. Why not? Yeah. Is what I say. First one, working hard and being the man has worked out pretty well for Jimmy Butler in Miami. In the next year or two, who do you want to have a chance to be the man? And that's from JC. I know I ended that sentence a little bit weird. That's because <laughs> I'm that's because I typoed JC's email. What what I was gonna read was in the next year or two, who do you want to have a chance to be the man in the next year or two? <laughs> <laughs> sort of just stopped. Uh, he also writes ad reads to the skin, manscaped. Uh, nice. JC <laughs> to the skin. Yeah, to the skin. So who do you want to see get their own team like Jimmy B has? Um, look, I don't need it to happen right now, JC. You said a year or two, because I'm fine seeing if the Embiid Simmons pairing can work with a new coach. But if it can't, I'd like to see Ben Simmons have his own damn team. I'd like to see what you could do constructing a roster. Look, he's got his limitations. So does a guy like Giannis, though. And that has worked out in regular season success and some playoff success. But Ben Simmons is my obvious answer here. Again, Philly, relax. Don't throw a battery at me right now. I'll give it a chance. I'm still on board in Bede and Simmons, but eventually, if it doesn't work, give both of these guys their own team, and let's see if uh, who can do better as the alpha dog for both squads. That's my pick, Ben Simmons. Great choice. Uh, the question is, which team would you more be more excited to see, a Ben Simmons-centric team or a Joel Embiid-centric team? I would have been Embiid up until probably this season. Give me a Simmons team. Yeah, I think that's my answer too. I don't know, Lee, do you disagree? Would you still go Embiid? I don't know which team would be more successful. Of course, it depends what's around these yeah. pieces and and what conference they're in and who's the coach and all that. But yeah, I think i go Simmons as more intriguing to me. Yeah, I, I, I want to see the Sixers trade MB to the Heat for uh, Bam out of bio and see how Bam and Ben Simmons go together. <laughs> I know it's obviously not, not going to happen. No, I mean, that that's pretty much the obvious answer, though, to this question is, yeah. is Simmons and MB can it work? Probably not. Probably not. But we've got another coach coming in there to see if that can change. Yeah, let's give it a chance. And uh, and maybe Dan Tony's the guy who can kind of unlock it. We know that the Sixers struggle on offense and Dan Tony is all offense. So... If he can't get it to work, uh, then if Mike D'Antoni can't get Ben Simmons to shoot 10 threes a game, who can? <laughs> no exactly. one can. Yeah. Exactly. So, uh, yeah, I, I mean, that's the thing. They both have uh, such incredible talents and skills, but they both have drawbacks to the game, and they do both have injury concerns uh, going forward. You know, Simmons has missed a lot of time. Uh, Embiid's missed a ton of time. So which one is going to have the longer career? I would say Simmons, probably. But uh, but there's still it's 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 out there right now, and uh, the next couple of years are going to be pretty interesting to see how just if they do stay together. That's the that's the real thing, and uh, and if the Sixers decide to try to cash in on one of them, and uh, and who they who they trade and who they you know it's a bit like a Shaq and Kobe situation there. Even though that was different, Shaq was a little bit older, uh, you know, when the Lakers decided to cash in on him. But uh, that's mm-hmm. where the Sixers are right now. It's like great talent, but I'm just not sure if the fit is right between these two. Yeah, okay. I, lo- I love how we've all gone to the uh, to the Sixers directly and, and not sort of dreamt up a, uh, hmm, I see a guy deep on a roster. Even the Clay Thompson needs his own team idea was a, 
was pretty prominent a couple of years back. But I think now, as we are right deep in the playoffs, we see that you have to be a real, real superstar to be a number one guy and lead your team deep into the playoffs. Uh, but the Ben Simmons one, even though, like you were sort of alluding to, Skeets, who knows how great it would be, right. it's more of just a uh, an experiment, a basketball experiment to see what Benny Boy would do. And Mike mm-hmm. D'Antoni uh, has some experience or has some history there being a 76ers assistant with Brett Brown. Uh, so it would seem like they've got a a thing going on uh, that D'Antoni could have a, a relationship there with Philly. And obviously it would be incredibly interesting to watch. People will, will point back to Ben Simmons at the end of the, uh, the 18, 19 years the 17, 18 years, either one of those years where, where they won 16 games in a row uh, mm-hmm. without Joe right, Allen being right, in the lineup. Right. Yeah. Those uh, was 17, 18. And obviously at the end of the season, it's way, way different. Uh, things aren't, what they would be in October, November, December. Uh, but Ben was just running rampant over the NBA. He was just going from three point line to the rim. And uh, oh, yeah, that's when we were getting the like, oh, is this guy like the next LeBron? Like the way hmm. he plays and how, you know, physical he is on both ends. Um, yeah. yeah, you're right. I remember that. And it is intriguing if he could do that without an Embiid there. The problem we talk about all the time is them clogging the space up, right? That's an issue with these guys. So, you know, free them up a little bit. Give them their own room. Give them their own team for crying out loud. You said Clay Thompson task. Made me think of another one, but I don't know if anyone really cares. Like, are people by the idea of CJ McCollum having a own team? Along the Clay lines, right? You know, like, obviously, I think, guy the, I, yeah. I think, I think CJ is just a, a number two. I think I think that's his ceiling. Yeah. I don't think he's a number one guy. I think he'd be a great number two because he has been been that for Lillard. But yeah. CJ is your sort of number one guy, your franchise guy. I don't think so. I don't think yeah. uh, okay. I don't think he can take it too far. The other yeah. only other guy I dug deep on was uh, Michael Porter Jr. needs his own team, and he's ready for it, man. He talked oh, trash oh, to his yeah. own team. He said, "Get me the ball more." Yeah. The Nuggets are two and zero since he's ready. Uh, so I would say. Trade Jokic, trade Murray. <laughs> you got to build around Michael Porter Jr. with his number two, Bull Bull. Oh, okay, wow. That's yeah. the yeah. future right there. Well, Doesn't I mean, Michael it... Porter Jr. is going to have his own team at oh, some point. Probably. I mean, maybe he'll stick around in Denver and be their third guy, but uh doesn't seem necessarily like the personality that would happy to be a third option for the entirety of his prime. Interesting, interesting. Can't wait to see. Can't wait to see what happens. Because he was pretty complimentary. Even when he was saying, I need more shots, he was saying those guys are awesome and they should get some shots or should get their shots in, in Jokic and Murray specifically. But I should also get my shots. Yeah, right. So I hear what you're saying. Yeah, I hear what, that, what, what the future holds in Denver. It's so interesting. Tonight. Oh, baby. Oh, baby. Okay, Game seven, Zaza. You got to love it. All right, next one here. Greetings, peanut butter boys. <laughs> Interesting. Um, Been a fan for about six years now and a huge Raptors fan for even longer. The first game I attended without sitting in back of the nosebleeds there was against the Hawks. And I was ecstatic. Well, I had been watching the league for several years to that point. I was incredulous when I saw Dwight Howard draining threes in warmups. I didn't yet appreciate that every NBA player could shoot the lights out without defense. What is a time, NBA related or otherwise, where you have been surprised beyond belief Turn down for Walt Roof Pizza. Pretty sure that's a Breaking Bad reference there. From Ken. <laughs> Sending that. Am I wrong, Trey? I mean, You're right. I was like, Walt Roof Pizza. Yeah, I think yeah, that's, that's Breaking Bad. on the roof. Um, a good and question. Yeah, time you were NBA related or not, where you've been surprised beyond belief. Uh, first time I ever had a press pass was for a Bulls versus Cavs game in 2010. I walked down into the bowels of the United Center, and one of the first guys I walked by was Zydrunas Ilgauskas. And I'd never <laughs> seen a guy that was over seven feet before. He's listed at seven foot three, and the guy looked ridiculous. It looked like they took a normal person and just kept stretching and stretching and stretching and stretching. Even his arms seemed too long, his fingers seemed too long. It was just a, it's mind blowing to see somebody that is that much bigger than so many other tall people. Like, yeah. just somebody that's a head above. You know, LeBron is pretty weird to see. Oh, yeah. I've said this before on the podcast a long time ago. Similar to that, we were at an all-star weekend. It was one of our first ones, you know, Tass and JD and I, and we're there. We're in this media thing where you can go around to the guys and, and ask your silly questions. And I just, the guys would get up from their podium and like sort of walk to the exits and stuff like that. And I just remember just being in awe of Pau Gasol 
and LaMarcus Aldridge, like the way they were moving through a crowd of people, <laughs> just obviously, yeah, foot plus above the crowd, but they were moving like, like War of the Worlds robots or something <laughs> like that. Like it was just so, I just can picture the visual so crisply in my mind. And it's like, yeah, that's just next level height right there. It's uh, it's something to see you, until you're actually around them. You don't really truly appreciate how big these guys are and then how fast and how athletic they are for being that big. That's mm. the other part. Like, you know, most big guys when I were growing up uh. in high school were like the clumsiest, slowest guys yeah. ever. Not man, Trey Kirby. No, yeah, this guy's, this guy's fleet of foot, small footed, but fleet of foot. <laughs> um, but we were like a guy named Rick Smith's in our high school. And he was like, what? he was huge, but like, Rick really Smith went to your high school. Oh, sorry, oh, sorry, sorry, Daryl Smith. Daryl Smith. Holy crap! Maybe he was related. I never really asked him about that. Um, Did he have big yeah. Smiths? Uh, no, he he uh, he was just a slow big dude. But mm. that's how they generally are. And then that yeah. didn't get these guys at this level in the NBA. And they're actually <laughs> way more athletic than most of the, the general public, despite being seven foot tall and like you know nearly three hundred pounds. That reminds me of a guy in my high school who yeah. went went on to play college football uh, as an offensive lineman. Mm. He was huge, mm. and he could move his feet way faster than I I did. Uh, we're in a football drill where he was just mastering the footwork. Oh yeah, and it, it was am- it was really amazing to watch. He had to be he had to be three bills. I imagine he was huge. <laughs> that's but, a good, uh, yeah. Yeah. That's a good call. Cause like, it's one thing we're saying these seven footers, but you're right. These 300 pound, like offensive linemen could still chase your ass down. Like it, it could still beat you in a race. Mm-hmm. That's terrifying. Yeah. Like that's incredible. <laughs> you should not be able to move that quickly at that size. But, uh, Wow. So who did he play? Did he go CFL, NFL, or is he college? Uh, he played college, yeah. I don't uh, think he made the, the big show, the uh, big CFL show. But, uh, yeah, he was he was probably, uh, I don't know, maybe a Carlton Bear. Uh, are the, are, what What is the uh, the mascot for Carlton University? It's not Bears, are Ravens, they? Ravens, isn't it? I think it's Ravens. I'm thinking Carlton the Bear, the Toronto Maple Leafs mascot. Yeah, you are. I, I'm going to say Ravens, but don't quote me on that. Somebody that knows their uh, Ontario University. Looks out like there. Ravens is right, my yeah. man. Yeah, I sort of know a little bit about that. Lee, you got an answer for this one? Yeah, so uh, 2002 it was Tiger Woods was going for the Grand Slam of golf. Hadn't been done, I think, since uh, Gary Player or someone back in the day. And it was uh, they were playing the British Open up in Scotland near Edinburgh in Muirfield. Right. And uh, this was, you know, Tiger Woods was basically at this time, you know, maybe the biggest star in the world already. He'd won multiple majors. So I went up there and, uh, you know, that was the first time I'd ever seen a live golf event. And... Um, it's like like he's saying with Dwight Howard, like hitting threes, hearing and seeing a, a professional golfer and Tiger Woods hit the ball and seeing how far he could hit it. It is just mind boggling, just how straight and how deep and the sound it makes off the tee, you know, like that bang. It's like a shotgun almost. But here's the thing. So that day. Right, Tiger mm-hmm. Woods. It was so it was July in Scotland. I love Scotland, it's a beautiful place, but my god, their <laughs> weather is sometimes frustrating. It started belting down with rain and okay. was howling wind, and the crowd around Tiger Woods just was was un, unperturbed. Like everyone just still just followed Tiger Woods. You like the other guys who were playing virtually had no one around them, yeah. they, you know, because of the weather. But the 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 um the what Tiger Woods brought, the atmosphere he brought was incredible. So we were all watching him play. And he would hit this ball off the tee. It would go a mile. And then he would just kind of slunk after his ball like any other guy just playing golf because it was just, you know, had this massive umbrella around him. And he ended up shooting his worst ever round uh, as a professional at that point. He shot 81. And, and, yeah. And he basically, like, was out of contention from that point on. But what was funny about it was, like, again, the crowd just following him, following him around under those conditions and he shoots an 81, and that's his worst ever performance. It's like, imagine a normal guy out there playing golf. They would probably shoot 300 under those <laughs> conditions. <laughs> I was going to ask you, what were uh, Sebastian and Oscar like on the tee box uh, yesterday? Uh, you well, took him to the driving range. Yeah, we went to the driving range. Yeah, Oscar needs a little bit of work. Uh, sure. Sebastian's okay. If, you do, if he watches a ball, he can hit it straight. He's he's okay at that. But, wow. You know they hit they hit a few in a row and then like everyone you sort of slice one or you hook one and you're like oh, this game sucks and you want to go home. And so uh, but uh, but anyway I've got a photo here from uh, being there. There it is. There that was the day. <laughs> <laughs> again, this is not February. This is July, the wow. middle of the summer. 
uh, up in Muirfield, beautiful place up in Scotland. And uh, you can see it's just it's just an awful, awful day. But everyone, because Tiger Woods was there, it was like watching Michael Jordan in his prime, you know, like yeah. people just didn't care. Everyone was just following him around. Um, and, and you could see he was struggling into the conditions. But even still, he was like, oh, he, he had a he had a one over on this whole par four. And it was just like the most incredible strokes you've ever seen, uh, <laughs> all things considered. So, you know, like you come away from it, you just like, I mean, to get to that level of, of an athlete is uh, is something really special, you know. I'm, I'm also convinced you have a photo of yourself at every sporting event ever. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and, and it's the old, what do I do with my arms pose as well? You yeah, just, and yeah, I just, yeah, you're doing the exact same thing in all of these photos. <laughs> you're like, I was here, here I am. I mean, that was it because, you know, you go up there, you're thinking I'm going to get a lot of great photos, but it was like, ah, oh, it was cold and wet. Right. You put the camera away and then you're like, quick, because I think this is actually, we were just about to leave. I was like, oh, quick, get a photo of me, quick, 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 you know, hold the umbrella, but you can see the people behind me. Hold get a photo of me. I might be on a podcast 20 years from now. I might have to show this to them. All right. That's Some, a, someone amazing. right now is photoshopping Lee into every historical I love scene it. in the Please. history of the world. And he, Lee has just taken five photos of five different outfits, short sleeve to long sleeve, all conditions. It is snowy, rainy. Perfect. Perfect. Get on um, do you have an answer for this one, Tass? Anything else? Uh, well, well, in 2011, I'll make this one quick. Um, we were amidst the uh, the season being locked out, so we toured around the U.S., did our shows, and we went from Chicago to Portland and uh, happened to be on a plane with Wesley Matthews. That was pretty cool, but that's not my story. Um, Wesley Matthews reads a magazine incredibly well. It's just it's the way he reads a magazine. It's incredible. No, we got to uh, Portland for LaMarcus Aldridge's charity basketball event, and Kevin Durant was there. And, uh, you know, this wasn't a, a normal NBA event. It was sort of felt like a, a practice type event in, in terms of media access, or you could just kind of be on the floor. And so we got really up close uh, with with these players and it felt like I was a ball boy just hanging around the ball rack when Kevin Durant came and grabbed some balls. Media was trying to get questions for him. He said, hey, can I get some shots up first? And uh, he grabbed ball. And this is it's kind of like Tiger in just his mechanics and how smooth he was for a seven footer. Uh, it just it shouldn't be possible. But uh, just watching him get shots up from up close was really what I marveled at uh, because of how huge he is, how long he is, but still the rhythm and, and the flow he has from picking up a ball to letting her fly is, it was just something to behold for me. And that's why, you know, one of the most skilled, probably the best scorer for me for a long time, even though, you know, it's a, it's, it's a debate, but uh, I don't know, just the, the smoothest, most natural guy. I can't wait to see him uh, one more time here with the Brooklyn Nets. Feels oh. like it's been a while. For mm -hmm. sure. Yeah. Kevin Durant in the Eastern Conference to me, I haven't wrapped my head around yet. Right. Yeah. It's a little Good strange. <laughs> We've never had him over here on the on the <laughs> East Coast, the EM, the evening minutes time. <laughs> Great. Yeah. All right. Next one here. Hey, Dinks and Dumps. Second time emailer here. Long time listener. Anyways, I was watching Nikola Jokic versus the Clippers and suddenly realized he reminds me of Steve Nash. He's a great playmaker and is always looking to get his teammates involved first before trying to get his own, even though he can get his own at any time. Not to mention, he's super clutch and isn't afraid to take over down the stretch. Then I remembered something Tass said about Frank Jackson, the Pelicans Frank Jackson, reminding him of Rick Fox. I believe he was talking about it more for their looks than their playing style. This got me wondering, what other current NBA players remind you of retired ones, even though you wouldn't think about it immediately? Thanks for making me look like a maniac. When you make me laugh out loud while I'm biking to college, manscape, shave your balls cleanly. That's from Julius <laughs> in Amsterdam, where wow. they ride bikes. Oh, uh, yeah. I'll, I'll, uh, let me comment on Frank Jackson real quick here. Definitely, <laughs> uh, I was definitely talking somewhat about the looks. Yeah. They're, they're both classic looking men. They've got the classic look. Uh, studly men. That being said, uh, I also thought that Frank Jackson could be like Rick Fox, uh, a role player on championship teams. I think he's got that talent uh, and being able to knock down threes. Obviously, he's a lot smaller than Ricky Fox, and mm -hmm. Rick was guarding people on the perimeter, so that might be a bit of a shortcoming, no pun intended, for Frank. Uh, but I could see that happening. Uh, and, and I'll answer the cue first here as well. Uh, a guy... This is tough. I thought that I thought this was tough. Maybe it's because we're doing the beach step in here on a Tuesday. My, my brain's not in... Uh, Beach step in question mode, but Darren Williams 
uh, is is the old Jamal Murray to me. I think Jamal Murray, mm. uh, you know, you can kind of go for 50. Mm. Uh, you go for 50 or you can go for 15. Um, you know, he's a scoring guard, even though Darren Williams got lots of uh, one-pass assists to Carlos Boozer. Uh, but um, and, and there, I think both are sort of late bloomers a little bit. Uh, Darren Williams was an all-star. How many all-star teams did Darren Williams make? Four, three, three, three or yeah. four, sure. Three, yeah. yeah. And I think Jamal Murray could be in that family. Uh, sure. About that, he's got the slingshot shot. I think they're sort of similar. Darren Williams is a bit bigger physically, uh, a bit of a wider man. But you know, he was. In 2012, the conversation was, who is the better point guard, him or Chris Paul? For about a year, I think Darren Williams was in the the, the one or 1A category. And Jamal Murray, maybe he could be the best, quote unquote, guard. I don't know if you call him a guard or shoot, or point guard or shooting guard. Who the heck knows with Jamal Murray? But, you know, he's in that mold where he's kind of both. And maybe he can be in that category for a year or so. But he's borderline. He's borderline where he can be a star to a superstar on a team and then he can fade away. So mm. hopefully he can, uh, he can veer more towards the star because people thought Darren Williams could be the guy that takes the Brooklyn Nets to the top when they, you know, made the huge move for Paul Pierce and Kevin Garnett, but it didn't end up working out. Uh, hopefully Jamal Murray can, uh, can attain some of that. So game seven, baby <laughs> game seven. Can't wait. <laughs> this, guy's Here pumped. We go. this guy is pumped. Uh, well I'll go next. Cause mine is also a point guard comparison. And I tweeted it out a few weeks ago. Cause it hit me watching him. I was like, Goran Dragic. I mean, I made a joke about it, but I said, Goran Dragic is the Nick vanilla Excel. Um, but <laughs> he got a lot of Van Exel like things to him, to me. I was a huge Nick Van Exel fan. I'm a Dragic fan. It's the lefty for sure. The craftiness, um, you know, the ability to hit a three. Now, Nick Van Exel, I remember him just as a young gun, baby-faced. I mean, he always still looks like that. But Goran Dragic, of course, is older and then was coming off the bench this year and then back in the starting lineup. But uh, I don't know. I, I see some similarities. Maybe I'm reaching. I don't know if you guys agree or disagree. But Goran Dragic, to me, has got a little Nick Van Exel in him. And I love it as I am a huge fan of both of these players. So that's, a, you know, that little – we talked about it in that series last one. It's like – don't worry, yeah, Brooke Lopez always uh, deters people at the rim. It's not going to matter with Dragic because he doesn't go all the way to the rim. He does these little stops where he like pivots and then flips it over. He does his little floaters. And uh, I remember Nick Van Exel having a bit of that to his game too. So that was my comparison. Trey, do you have another one? Well, DeAndre Ayton is every single 90s center that you've ever seen because he's got <laughs> flat top hair. He's got big muscular shoulders and yep. he's not necessarily shooting threes. He's going to shoot like a 20 footer. So I went on Twitter and looked at, um, I just searched Deandre eight and reminds me, uh, an upcome, no surprise, Patrick Ewing, Brad Doherty, David Robinson, Robinson. Yeah. Elijah one. I don't know if I would go for <laughs> Elijah one, but he was in the nineties. But the funniest thing I saw, no doubt was a tweet, uh, that had zero retweets, zero likes from Clipper Spencer it says Deandre Ayton's face reminds me of Santa Claus. And I was like, wow, <laughs> actually so right to me he's got like very um very full cheeks and he just looks very jolly at all times he doesn't have the bowl full of jelly obviously right face wise i kind of see it <laughs> yeah okay well i mean that's uh that's super old school like santa old claus old so santa DeAndre claus. Him. yeah david, david robinson i i think we've talked about it before like in the bubble when they were making their perfect run there he he does have a lot of david robinson and, and his appearance helps for sure but there's, there's some similarities there. Man, Suns will be happy if that turns out to be true, yeah, like his sure. actual game. Lee, what do you got? Well, my guy's not actually retired, but I see young uh, Bam Adebayo as a young Dwight Howard out there sometimes catching those lobs. Uh, he just, the way that he runs to the rim and then he throws it down, he kicks the legs out. I'm like, this guy, if he can develop a shot like he has, he's, he's got that little mid-ranger there. He's going to be so lethal and he's just so athletic and so springy. Like I was looking at young Dwight uh, clips the other day and you just sort of forget sometimes just how powerful he was on those jumps and how he could just throw bodies out the way uh, on some of those pick and rolls. Like guys would go up and contest and Dwight would just jump over them and oh, yeah. throw it and smash the ball down. And I've seen that a couple of times with Bam in the playoffs already so far where he, you know, he runs into the paint and there's a defender going back and he just jumps over them or, you know, above them and, and throws it down. So, uh, you know, he's not anywhere near as good as Dwight was in his prime yet. But I can sort of see if the development comes. And he was an all-star this year. I mean, he's a, he's a good player. He's on the on the up for sure. Uh, I just sort of see similar similarities there between him and him and young Dwight. And even facially, like looking back at young Dwight, they're similar too in the face, mm -hmm. I think. So um yeah. Bam looks a lot older though for uh for a, for young, a young guy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. 
<laughs> and I would also then throw in, like, he gets a lot of the Draymond Green comparisons, what Bam can do offensively in the middle, like operating, right? Yeah. Throwing yeah. it out to shooters and, and being able to dribble. Like, he can handle the ball a lot more than Dwight Howard can handle. Yeah, oh, yeah. Like, for he's sure. bringing it for up sure. and stuff like that. But I, I hear what you're saying with the athletic. Exact same shoulders. Exact same yeah. shoulders. Mm. I think you could Photoshop those shoulders. <laughs> you would never know the difference. Wow. All right. Good question, that one. That's a fun one. Let's hear your answers as well. Next one here. Hey, guys. According to ESPN's Baxter Holmes, some NBA GMs think that the lack of travel and additional rest has contributed to better play in the bubble and has helped even out the competition. There's even been some discussion of the league looking at NBA home stands, you know, like baseball. A team flies into a city, plays the host team in two games over a short time span. This would reduce the mileage teams fly during the regular season, but is this too radical? Would the NBA home stand concept really work? Thanks. That's from Andrew. Uh, I'm glad we got this question. This was a fascinating article. This idea, Lee, what do you think? Could the NBA home stand work or no way? It's a, it's too uh, too different from the sport of baseball and what they do. Yeah, the big problem is in baseball, you can play a team up to 18 times over the course of a season, whereas in, in basketball, it's a maximum of four so for those East Coast teams, if you're on, if you're an East team and you play that team four times, then perhaps it can work. But if you're playing the West Coast teams, you know Los Angeles and, and Phoenix and all that, you're only playing them once at home and once away anyway. So it doesn't really work. But I definitely think that this bubble, the, the environment that they're in right now, has led to less uh, games where teams just look bad and look like it, like the travel has caught up with them. Sure. Like, like I think the quality of basketball has been incredible. And the fact that they're playing day after day after day, uh, you know, or, or day on day off, you know, they're still, you know, that, that's still a, a pretty intense uh, workout to have to play that many games in, in such a short period. But when you are just going straight back to your hotel room to rest and then you've got the day off the next day, rather than going on a, you know, maybe two or three hour flight and having to go back to your hotel and your apartment, I think it has, uh, it has made it a little bit easier on the bodies there for the guys. So Okay, so then why not this idea? I mean, I saw Kurt Helen at NBC Sports say, like, just put it into an example, right? If the Heat had a homestand and they would play two games in three nights against, you know, Indiana, and then maybe two games in a row against Charlotte, like there'd be a lot of back-to-backs against the same team in the same spot, Lee. Mm. But would fans come out to the arena the same way? That's interesting because in baseball, you have a different pitcher, right? Um, so there's like a different matchup. It's not just like, here we go again. <laughs> Roll out the same five, uh, starting five, both squads, get a couple guys from the bench. This is just the same thing. I don't know. Would I don't know if people would care at all if like the Heat are playing – Again, like the Indiana Pacers, two times out of three nights in Miami. Are both of those times it's a, a packed house and no one cares? I don't know. Um, but it obviously would reduce the travel, mm. uh, which could be beneficial if the basketball is better. It's, I, I think it's a fascinating concept. I'm just, I haven't convinced myself that it would work yet. I don't know. Trey, would you have a take on this? I think it's worth trying just because the basketball has been so uniformly solid in the bubble. I think it's worth trying a uh, same. Same setup, two nights out of three. I think that's okay. Right. You know, you, a lot of bands, they book a show, they sell out, and they put on the same show the next day in the very same city. So you can get the different set of fans out for two sets of uh, the same thing. I think that's yeah. fine, and I think it might be worth it. It's gonna be. It would be weird to figure out uh, the travel of it, but if there's a way to do it where you know a team flies into Chicago, they play the Bulls twice, then they fly to Milwaukee, they play the Bucks twice, then they fly to Detroit and Cleveland, right. and you get rid of all of your Midwest teams. That's similar to a bubble. It probably reduces travel a little bit, and if it makes the players better, if it makes the games better, then it's worth it. Tess? I, I, t I totally agree. I like the music comparison. Kurt Vile could be doing a couple shows in one city. <laughs> Kurt Helen could be writing about it. <laughs> so many Kurt's. Yeah, when Kurt Schilling. Oh, no, I don't want to talk about that. Uh, but when, uh, yeah, it, it makes sense. There would be scheduling quirks to work out. Yeah. Lee, Lee mentioned currently the East plays the West only one time at home. Uh, so in this instance, I don't think every team, every fan base, I guess, would see the other 29 teams. Uh, but I think we should sort of do away with that anyways. I think if we were trying to get towards reseeding one through 16, that would have to be factored in as well right, anyway. Right. So there, there, uh, there's there's too much travel. Uh, and it, it's clear, it shows uh, here down in the bubble that flying, obviously, 
uh, it's science. It has an effect on the body. And uh, you know, we flew to Las Vegas that time, same night. Uh, Lee had to get an IV the next day. It's all, it's all because of that flight. Yeah, I don't think it was the flight that did that. Uh, well, yeah, that's how it got started. Lee was all dehydrated. Sure. And, uh, and that's where it started. Uh, I think it was JD's fault. He was just drinking whatever JD was ordering. Ah, uh, it was a great night, wasn't it? Uh, yeah, so, yeah they're, they're gonna be, they can figure it out. I, I don't think it would really, really affect attendance. Does, is baseball attendance great anyways you see a team three straight times as baseball attendance selling out uh no not i think right i think it's uh, not right, definitely yeah. not right now <laughs> uh so i don't know I, I i think there's there's a lot of positives to to not traveling as much i, I don't think the um I, I don't think the negatives outweigh the positives in right this but the logistics would out. be a nightmare i do think like you said <laughs> because like to bring the band comparison back in there Well, that's going to be an issue. You have these arenas are not just being used for the sporting event, right? Just for basketball. They're being used for like 10 other things. And it's already, I'm sure, a very, very difficult job to make it all work and all the opening slots. Now it's like now that window that the team is at home um, is obviously much, much longer. Now that could be maybe that's a good thing when it comes to scheduling. I'm not sure. But there's other there's other bigger windows now, right? Right. Yeah. No, I know. Now that I talk it out, I'm not sure. These scheduling masters, they're masters for a reason. Yeah, they, they, can, right. they can pull it off. All right. We got a lot of great questions still to get to, but first, quick word from our sponsors. Are you ready for some DraftKings? Mm. Yeah, it sure was nice seeing the teams back out on the gridiron this weekend, eh? Woo! I don't know why I'm saying it like a Canadian. This is American <laughs> football. Uh, Double header on Monday night. Two pigskins. One night. Whoa, baby. Don't know who won, but uh, maybe that pigskin will finally be as big as that CFL ball, the Canadian Football League ball, huh? <laughs> yep. Our balls are bigger in Canada. It's crazy, but it's true. I didn't think this was a manscape to add balls. Yeah. Or, yeah. Uh, luckily for us, though, that was just week one. There is no better place to get in on all of the action than DraftKings, the leader in one-day fantasy sports. To add to this week's excitement, DraftKings has millions of dollars in total prizes up for grabs. If you haven't tried DraftKings yet, head to the App Store now because you don't want to miss this. Draft your lineup and feel the sweat like never before. Every run, pass, and catch means more with DraftKings. It's simple. Pick your lineup, stay under the cap, and see how your team stacks up against the competition. That is simple. Nothing adds to the excitement of watching the game quite like having a shot at millions of dollars in prizes. Wait for it. There's more than millions in this next line. DraftKings has paid out billions Billions. of dollars to winners since 2012. So they know a thing about Cold, hard cash. Been around since 2012. Not a typo. All right. Uh, Download the DraftKings app now and use code RUN. For a limited time, new users users can get a free shot at millions of dollars in prizes this week. Don't miss out on the week two action. Enter code RUN to get a free shot at millions of dollars in prizes with your first deposit. That's code RUN. Only at DraftKings. Make it rain, JD. Minimum $5 deposit required. Eligibility restrictions apply. See DraftKings.com for details. Tess, were you confused by the 2012? You think they've been around longer or not that long? I couldn't tell by your confusion Mm. there over 2012. Well, you know, we've been doing the show since uh, way before 2012. It doesn't feel like they've been around for eight years. I thought it was a lot more recent than that. Huh. Okay, so like a five-year. Well, they've been around. They're the Kings, man. That's why they got all that cold hard cash. Uh, I don't know. Maybe they weren't making their mark from 2012 to 2015. Well, it takes you know a while. I mean? Yeah, get into yeah, the market. Yeah, it takes a yeah, while. Sure. Yeah, uh, they, they are, are the market. market. Yeah, I wonder how they much are Cam the Stewart's money they've got. Oh, got- oh. <laughs> great question. Cam Stewart was very pumped about Hainzer's burgers that he made last night. Okay. Did you, see that? Okay. Did you see those burgers that Hainzer made last night? <laughs> Cam Stewart replied. Oh, baby, those look like some good <laughs> oh, 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 my God. I would, you couldn't pay me a billion dollars to eat a Hanser burger. I'll tell oh, you come that. on. No what? way. What? Those are probably like cigarette butts in it by accident. <laughs> what, you don't like a smoky flavor in your meat? No. It was heavy on the meat, though. I, I'm not a fan of bacon on a burger. It was burger, bacon, cheese. <laughs> Uh, definitely tomato, mustard, pickle. 
Lettuce. Oh, this guy's got a, he's drafting his own burger lineup. He's eh? <laughs> <laughs> hoping to stay under the salary, bud. With an um, Upper Canada upper Canada logger on the side of the photo, okay. plus a frosted glass. Which is the, <laughs> nice touch. Nice touch. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> oh, jeez. Lily, what do you got? Uh, yeah, well. You're going to yourself a Hanser burger on DoorDash? <laughs> well, no, but uh, I'm actually, that's right. I've got a DoorDash ad read here, and I like it when I have the DoorDash. DoorDash ad read because then it gets me in the mood to order some DoorDash something yeah. after the show. We're going to be done around 11.15 or so. And uh, Sufi's Kitchen up the road, yeah. 11 o'clock it opens. So, you know, I'm getting that falafel for lunch. And I might even get some hummus. Actually, I don't know if I'll get the hummus because Roxanna made some. I'll have some homemade hummus. But... <laughs> Everything else there from Sufi's is great. You guys have had it. It's, those salads they throw in on the side are incredible. I love it. It's a Persian restaurant if anyone in Atlanta is looking for something to have for very, lunch very today. Good. Yeah. Uh, and you can get it on DoorDash. Of course you can. I've already checked that out. I wanted to make sure. I mean, I could walk there, but why walk when you can DoorDash? I mean, it just makes sense because uh, DoorDash is the app that brings you the food you're craving right now or within about an hour or so uh, right to your door. Uh, it's so easy. Just open the DoorDash app, choose what you want to eat, and your food will be left safely outside your door with the new, what's that word, Skeety? Contactless. Delivery <laughs> drop-off setting. I wanted you to say it. I, I can't say it either. Yeah. Uh, and DoorDash, the thing about DoorDash, if you're listening from somewhere all around the world, maybe you can DoorDash in your place because uh, 300,000 partners, the US, Puerto Rico, Canada, and Australia. Wow. Uh, it's not the whole world. but yeah, it's, ah, it's, 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 Good chunk. Enough. Good start. Um, so you can support your local go-tos and everyone right now, those restaurants, they've been really hit lately with the uh, coronavirus. So support your local restaurants if you can. Uh, many of them are still open and just for delivery. So uh, you can still get that great food and you can eat it in the comfort of your home, which is great. And uh, I encourage everyone to do it because right now our listeners can get five big ones off and zero delivery fees on their first order of $15 or more when you download the DoorDash app and enter code no dunk now. He's rolling his R's like crazy. Yeah, I can't, I can't get the $5 off anymore because I've already used mine. Uh, but I, I, and I'm not going to set up another account or anything like that. I'm not, I'm not like that. Uh, so <laughs> if you want to get 5 bucks off, $15. I mean, $15. You're not getting anything decent for less than $15. So it's worth it. You can't even order hummus. For, uh, no, you can't. You yeah. can't. Uh, that's $5 off and zero delivery fees with your first order when you download the DoorDash app in the App Store and into code no dunks. Don't forget, that's code no dunks for $5 off your first order with DoorDash. And if you're in Atlanta, order from Sufi's, get the falafel <laughs> and the side salad. And you'll be happy. You'll have a great day. It's so fresh. And they only do that falafel wrap for lunch. They don't do it for dinner. You have to order the falafel Ooh, uh, I like that. Like separately and make it your own. So, um, yeah, uh, that's probably the best falafel I've had in the city of Atlanta. <laughs> Fair. I would say. Yeah. Can, you, uh, can you promise me something? If the Nuggets do win tonight, Game 7 versus the Clippers, they're a huge underdog. You always got the Nuggets shirt on. I was going to point that out. <laughs> I think you got to eat some hummus during tomorrow's show. <laughs> you got to show us some of Roxy's great hummus and you got to eat it throughout the show. If the Nuggets win. Sure, why not? Yeah, why not? Okay. That's not a punishment or anything like no, that. It's great. No, I get to no. I get to uh, I get to eat while we're doing the show. Perfect. Yeah. yeah. Because we were yeah, we were, you know, if, for those that don't know, we were somehow comparing the Nuggets uh, <laughs> come back to a plate of hummus as an appetizer as a maker. Anyway, Lee's eating hummus if the Nuggets win game seven. Tonight. I hope they win. I would Sorry. love to eat some hummus. Okay. Oh, great. Great comment here. Uh, is this a Sufi's ad or a DoorDash ad? <laughs> no one's, That's no great. One's yeah. Sure anymore. <laughs> Yeah, our ads couldn't get long enough. We decided to add some more places we wanted to advertise. For. I like how Lee called it five big ones off. I've never heard five dollars. <laughs> oh, okay, the, yeah. Here, here we go. Here we go. <laughs> the Hanser Burger. I did forget the banana peppers. Oh, Very I like nice. The peppers a there. lot. Yeah. Hey, that doesn't look too bad. I, no, I take it back. You know, yeah. I, yeah. I, I was picturing a Hanser burger in my mind. It didn't look like this. This looks you solid. Can't a lot of foliage. That's yeah. a lot of toppings. Too yeah. many toppings. I agree. Uh, too much bacon. I mean, you're you're drowning in bacon. There. <laughs> um, and I, I was actually mistaken. I'm not sure. You guys tell me, is it a frosted glass or is, does he have lemonade plus a beer? Yeah, I don't uh, To I go mean, with his two birds. That's, that's ice in there. Ice no? cubes, yeah. yeah. You don't usually water down your beer with ice, but. Uh, I mean, he's got two burgers. He needs two different drinks, I yeah, guess. I guess so. 
Uh, you don't need two burgers, Hanser. I mean, cut it off. Grub yeah. time. That's a great cap <laughs> right there. I, I like that. Okay, I take it back. I would I would gladly eat one of those Hanser burgers. <laughs> hey, you can have your cigarette after. Excuse yeah, me. I can have my Gary Player after. <laughs> All right. Hey, no Dunkarinos. What are some opinions you have about today's NBA that make you sound like the proverbial old man yelling at clouds? <laughs> I realize that at the relatively young age of 33, I feel a lot of nostalgia looking at past eras, whether it's the physical nature of the 90s, the mid-range experts of yesteryears, the lack of loyalty of modern stars and teams, it must be said, etc. What's your personal old man opinion on today's league? That's from Nicholas in Quebec City, Skeet's old man opinion. Well, I just want to address this email first. I, I get it. You're looking back. You're watching the YouTube clips. You're seeing this range jumper, seeing the big muscles on David Robinson and all that, and it's fun. But you're also not watching the entire games from the 90s. No, you're not. You're watching the clips. That's fine. They're there for a reason. Let's watch them. It's different, okay? This is better. It is much, much better. And just take it from someone who's a lot older than you at your young age of 33. The games, while there were moments, there were characters, you know, they were ugly, ugly basketball games at times in comparison to today's game. But that won't stop me from yelling at a cloud. I started to really turn. I was never a big college basketball fan, but I really started to turn like, I don't know when it happened. It felt like it happened. But when it felt like every shot was a three-pointer, I don't love it. Uh, you know, I like a little variety. Um, I like a little banana pepper on my burger and a little maybe bacon <laughs> on my burger and stuff, and maybe even a cigarette button there if we're getting crazy. But the NBA, of course, has just veered into, like, leaned into the three-pointer, 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 and it started at times the last couple of years to feel at times like a college game to me, um, which I don't love. I just don't love it. So that would be my old man yelling at clouds. But again, with saying all of that, it's way better, and we have so much talent in this league, and it's just more enjoyable, I think, basketball. Lee, you're the oldest of the bunch here. Do you agree with that at all? But that is that is my one. There's too many three-pointers. It sounds ridiculous, but I guess that's my one gripe. Oh, where do I start here? Oh, no, you, you, the the three-point shooting for sure is, is the problem because I understand that is the game now, but yeah. when, when you see a guy come down – on a, in a transition, and there's no one under the rim for his team, and there's 22 seconds on the shot clock, and he just fires away, and it's like, what is that shot? You don't need that shot right there. That, that to me, is when I sort of stand there, hands on my hips, shaking my head, just going like, that's a bad shot. It's a bad shot. Even if it goes in, it's a bad shot because you're basically just giving up on a possession on a Hail Mary. And when we were kids, I think it was the same for you in Canada, uh, Skeets, because I think you've said this once before, in under 12s, uh, three-pointers didn't count as three-pointers because they didn't want kids shooting three-pointers. Right. They wanted kids going in. So even if you shot a three-pointer, it was only two. Yeah. And then when I joined under 14s, a threes counted, and then I started playing in men's leagues as well. And the coach was one of my dad's friends, Snowy, and he was like, he used to get so he used to get so angry at us kids who would come in and get the ball and look at our feet to yes. stand, you know, to yes. get behind. And he would say, if I had a paintbrush. I would paint over that three-point line straight away. You just don't worry about where your feet are. If it's a good shot, you know, take the good shot. Don't look for the three-point line. Right. Um, and so now when I see that in the NBA, because you see it all the time, guys check their feet, and I'm like, just shoot it, man. You've got the ball. You're open. Shoot it. You know, so uh, I, I get angry at that. I also get angry at a travel call because I don't really know what a travel is anymore. <laughs> sure. And uh, you see it when a guy gets the ball at the top of the paint and he makes a move, and sometimes the refs just go, oh, that's a travel. And then you're like, then you'll see five guys in a row do it, and there'll be no call of a travel. And I'm like, well, what is the difference? How can they tell the difference between what one guy did and what the other guy did? And then the other one is the block charge. I don't know what a charge is anymore. I don't know what a block is anymore because sometimes you see guys moving, other times you see them leaning, and then they go and replay and they confirm it. And I'm like, okay, well, he was moving though. Surely, like when we were taught as a kid as well, it was like, you can't be moving, you've got to stand there at completely still. Uh, to get a charge, but you see guys do a little bit of a lean, they drag a foot in, yeah, yeah. And it's like, well, I say that that's a that's not a block, that's a charge. So, uh, yeah, so sometimes when I'm watching the game, I just there shaking my head, just back in my day, back in my day. 
You guys are old. Even my high school coach was like, don't take a mid-range jumper. Step back and shoot a three. Wow, that's smart. That's why you got range out there. No, yeah. that's why I shoot threes and miss them all the time. Well, yeah, good point. Good point. Yeah. Why couldn't what? Snowy find a paintbrush? I mean, Snowy said, if, if I could, if I had a paintbrush, wow, I, mean, yeah, I couldn't I mean, go down in a local <laughs> paint store. And uh, yeah, there's, uh, listen, I think what uh, Nicholas is saying, I don't think he goes back and watches clips whatsoever. I think he's just suppressed all the bad stuff or, or all, all the things that don't make him feel all warm and cozy inside from those, from the old days. He just, he just remembers all the good stuff. Okay. Uh, and yeah, and that's, he went on and on in this email. I had to edit a bunch of this stuff out. The, dw <laughs> the dwindling, the dwindling post play, the constant coaching carousel. I kind of agree with that. Uh, the free agency chaos of July 1st. What? Uh, the definitely not fun rise in Texan flagrance. That would be nothing 30 years ago. The absurd number of three point shots, the pointless and eternal, eternally long instant replays. That's true. Oh, so he, I uh, mean, what, what are you doing, Nicholas? Stop watching, man. Yeah. Jesus. No one's forcing you to watch it. Well, you know what I would want? I, I want my center to have a very, very small skill set. Can't <laughs> dribble, can't shoot, and barely move. I want an immobile center. Just like the old days, that would be good. That would be a lot of fun. They're they're far more skilled today, that's for sure. Uh, you got to throw that in there. Everybody, ideally, uh, can can pass the ball, can can dribble and shoot. And uh, you know the the fact that we have, I know you're a young 33, but back in the 80s and 90s, didn't have this proliferation of of euros and international players. Now we've got players from all over the globe at all times. Uh, and it's not just, you know, one guy on one team. We've just got the best players in the world here in North America. So you got to be happy about that, Nicholas. You got to be happy about that. Got to get a, I had to get a little positive after uh, Lee's rant there. But uh, Trey, <laughs> you, Trey, you got anything else to add? I do miss the days, Tass, like you're saying, where um, a quality that you could assign to a center is he really takes up space out there. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he takes up space. He's just standing there and being big. It's great. <laughs> Uh, the old man thing I've got is that we got to bring back uh, the baseline 12 footer, the Bill Wennington, the Luke Longley, the mm. Euro spot, the Russian spot, whatever yeah. you want to call it. Nobody ever shoots from there because people shoot the exact same percentage from the 12 foot baseline jumper as they do from the corner three. So right. you might as well back up. But man, if uh, if you were over six feet tall in the 1990s, you had to learn how to shoot from the baseline shooting 12 footers exclusively. Yeah. Yeah, the Russian spot is what uh, our coach called it in high school. Uh, you're right, though. There was a lot of different terms for it. Uh, that's awesome. Um, yeah, no, Nicholas, look, I don't mean to get upset with you, but uh, this is great. This is still great. I didn't realize he had all that other stuff that he took <laughs> out there, Tass. He was going on and on and on. Mm -hmm. Just like, it's a little frustrating, man. This is beautiful. It's a beautiful sport. Yeah, so we, but we have complained the last few weeks, undoubtedly, about the long replays for oh, sure. Okay. Oh, yeah. yeah get rid of that. Yeah. yeah. We don't know what flagrants are anymore, what a oh, hostile act things. is. Yeah. Uh, that has to be cleaned up. But uh, yeah, I, I, I definitely like that spot on the baseline. It's just one of the most fun spots to shoot from as well, with no backboard. Uh, yeah, I just we've seen it. We've seen it a couple of times pop up in, in the last few weeks in playoffs. Pascal Siakam mm -hmm. hit one from there, but. Yeah, you just never see it. Man, what uh, a blast. You you did remind me something, Tass, when you were saying, like, I wish we just had, like, a, the big old guy that can't do anything. Because today's, <laughs> you're right, like, today's game is, like, all five guys on the same team are, like, starting to become the same person because you mm -hmm. have to have all these skills. You have to be able to dribble. You have to be able to pass. Got to be able to move your feet on defense. Got to be able to shoot. All that. Whereas it wasn't like that. It was such a specialty where it's like, okay, yeah, you're like Trey said, okay, you're the big guy. Just take up space. <laughs> you got the easiest job. Just be big. You're great at that. Um, and all these other things. It reminds me of the, remember the old Nintendo, you want to date ourselves now, the old Nintendo ice hockey game where you oh, got yeah. to select your like, you, you know, your chubby guys, your skinny guys. <laughs> like you had to build like how many skinny guys, how many chubby guys do I want? <laughs> And there was some fun to that. It's like uh, you're trying to figure out. Even um, Super Spike Volleyball, one of my favorite Nintendo games of all time, it was like when you're picking your squads, do you want like the guys that are all around? Do you want the big muscle guys that can hit a hard but are slow? Do you want the super fast guys that can dig up everything? The specialty part is, I don't know, it's sort of fun uh, in those type of games and even back sort of in the 80s and 90s when there was a little bit more specialty to your NBA player. Now they're, just, they're all amazing. Right. Uh, Daryl Morey must have been playing ice hockey because now he just wants five skinnies out there, yeah, right? Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah. And the game was called ice hockey. Ice hockey. Yeah. That's there, right. there was no other word in the title. It was just ice hockey. It was skinny guy, more muscular guy, 
chubby guy. Who's the fourth guy? Like just short I guy? I actually uh, can't remember. Were there there's four, four of them. Were there? Yeah. But, four of them, have, but there's five guys on a hockey team, which is weird. Did you have to change, you know, how they changed that? Or is it just those five? No, you, I think, locked them lines. in at the start of the right. game. Yeah, like, line, you, this yeah. is my team. And these guys, we're going, we're going no. with these guys. Yeah. They didn't get tired back in my day. No. <laughs> <laughs> no. All right. Great question there. Great question, Nicholas. Next one. Hey, No Dunks crew. As a female listener, I have to say I thoroughly enjoy your Manscaped ads, even though I am clearly not your target audience. Every time I think they won't get me this time, without fail, I start giggling uncontrollably. I now look forward to these ad reads because, let's face it, any laughter during these crazy times is always welcome, even if it comes from five guys talking about grooming their downstairs business. My question, what is a random slash weird thing you look forward to? Thanks for the laughs. That's from Haley female listener in San Diego. Trey, what do you got, man? I love seeing the cold open clips that JD pulls for the show <laughs> every day. There's not one on beach stepping, but every daily show that we do, it's just something random from the internet. Sometimes it, uh, <laughs> sometimes it applies to what's going on in the world out there. And on the best days, it doesn't at all. Oh. You know, like uh, just a random fish clip, people yelling at each other. There's so many great things. Um, and we have a channel, you know, where we're putting in these clips. So I'll watch the ones I send, obviously, trying to recommend it. But I don't like to watch the ones that anybody else sends because I love to be surprised. You know, it really kicks off the show in a great way to see something completely out of the realm of normalcy uh, <laughs> to start the show before we're talking basketball. I love it. I 100% agree with that. There's been like two or three times by the time it's coming up on us to on camera here, like, I've just stopped <laughs> giggling or laughing at that random clip JD has uh, slotted in there. Was it Mondays, the, the dad making beer bongs? Was that Monday's show? <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, yeah. my goodness. I was, like, laughing again right up until the Good Morning Sweet World. Like, I just had to compose myself or I would have just been nonstop laughing. Yeah. Where do you find that one? Uh, well, uh, TikTok. Oh. I, what I normally will do is uh, I will look at – there will be like the best TikToks of the last month. And then I'll just watch the whole thing. And then gotcha. and that's, that's basically Perfect. how I find some stuff, some stuff people send me and, uh, and my browser history, I have, I got to clear it out because it's, <laughs> it's going to put you in jail. Is it? Exactly. exactly. <laughs> All right. That is a great random weird thing. What do you got Lee? Uh, well, I'm not sure how ran I'm not sure how excuse me uh, random this is because I don't know if you guys follow Zach King on um, on Instagram. Does anyone follow him? No, no. Uh, he's, he's he's some digital creator. Uh, he came into it was one of my suggested you know follows, and so I clicked on his uh, on his profile, and he has some incredible videos. He's a genius at how he can make these videos, but he's got 24 million followers. So I'm like, I don't know how I missed that beforehand. Well, what, but, uh, what, are, what are these videos? So he just it, they're like um they're kind of like TikToks in a way where he'll be doing something and you'll see what's happening and then all of a sudden it changes into something completely different. So like he was making I think the other day like a pizza or something like that and he's making the pizza and then he puts it on the ground and then he cuts it and it's a cake instead of a okay, pizza. Okay, I think I know who you're talking yeah. about. Yeah, and he had he had right. one the other day where it had the never ending hot dog where he's eating a hot dog. <laughs> And he turns around and takes another bite, and then he turns around again and just he just keeps on eating the same hot dog. It, it's it's just freaky. It's it's like like these days, you know, if you see a video on Instagram or somewhere, and it's a minute long. It's like I I haven't got a minute. I can't watch it. His videos just are like <laughs> captivating. You know, right. you'll like, watch I, an hour of him eating a never ending hot dog. Uh, it's it's I haven't because got a minute because <laughs> because because you look at it and you're just sort of like I'm trying to figure out how he's done this because he's always got other things going on in the background, uh, you know, so that the timeline looks. Like like it's real. Right, so it's uh, not, like, just to clarify, it's not magic. He's doing like manipulation no. camera yes. tricks. Yeah, yeah, editing. yeah. Okay, he's, I know he's, who you're talking about. Ah, he, he's incredible. And uh, yeah, so like he doesn't post. He hasn't doesn't have that many posts. He only, he's got less than a thousand. So he doesn't post all the time. But whenever he posts, I'm just sort of like, oh my god, I've, I've got to watch this. I can't wait to see what it is. You know. <laughs> <laughs> all right. What's his name? Zach What's King. The, Zach, Zach King. King. Yeah. Oh, I wonder if we started DraftKings. Um, <laughs> <laughs> uh, eight years ago. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. yeah that makes eight sense. years ago. Wow. You think you'd have more than a thousand posts over eight years? Uh, well, well, why, hold on. Why would you think that? You know how much effort and time must go into one of these videos? If oh, I'm yeah, thinking of the same guy, I feel like these probably take like hours, if not days, to make these videos, right? 
Uh, probably, but he's, uh, I don't know. Yeah. Okay. And now I'm looking him up because I think it's I'm a, it, also you sounds go ahead, like, it also sounds like the Instagram account, If You're High. Yes, this, this guy. Yeah, yeah, this which guy. is another, you know, mind, mind, mind trick uh, account. Um, for me, what's one weird thing that I look forward to? Yeah. Uh, I look forward to uh, getting compliments on my lawn from my neighbors passing by. I, I go outside <laughs> quite often um, mm -hmm. when I don't have to cut my lawn at all. I just go outside and I, I see people come by and I, uh, I give a little head nod. I, I kind of tilt my head toward the lawn saying, hey, take a look at this. <laughs> I need a compliment. Please compliment me on my lawn or I'll, I'll pull out the lawnmower. I don't have to cut it at all. I'll just push it onto the grass just to bring more attention to the lawn because I just want a compliment. So if you see me on my lawn, neighbors, hit me up with a compliment or send me an email. Just say how much you love my lawn. Uh, it just feels so good. <laughs> What's uh, the best compliment you've gotten like about your lawn? Is it just like looking good? Ooh, look, green, green, yeah, like green, like, yeah. I'm uh, not probably look at the grass on that. Um, that's, <laughs> that's probably the best one I've ever seen. Look at this grass. Yeah, I have been in honor of uh, my friend Mo Verney. I always say. Let's, I say to my daughter, let's go play on the grass. <laughs> and now she's been saying it like that over and over again. So I'm really happy that that's what I've taught her. I've taught her how to be a young Mo Fern. Wow. What, a, what, a, what a show this is. We've had Ken Stewart, we've had Haynes, we've had Mo. <laughs> we've been broadcasting every day since the beginning of the playoffs. You know it's going to get a little quirky in here. It is. Uh, let me, I'll answer this very quickly. Um, a random weird thing I look forward to right now is – Listening to a podcast uh, in the RHAP family, uh, the Rob Zestrino, Rob has a podcast family, <laughs> Big Brother. They have a special, of course, Big Brother podcast. Now, it's hosted by Taryn Armstrong. It's like a live feed update every day. I like listening to this every day when I can. I usually do it if I'm on a run. The weird part about this is I haven't watched a single second of Big Brother, but I know everything that is happening in the Big Brother household right now. I think it's Big Brother 22. It's an all-star season, so there are a bunch of people back. And I've watched Big Brother before a couple seasons, like years ago, back when DraftKings was just starting. But uh, <laughs> haven't watched it in like a couple of years now. So it's just a weird little quirk of mine. It's like wrestling. I've talked about this before. I listened to the Masked Man show. I uh, love that podcast. But I never watch wrestling. I mean, I'll watch maybe one event a year, two events a year tops. But this is even stranger to me. Big Brother's on like three nights a week. And I haven't wow. seen a single second of it, but I could tell you almost everything happening in the house, thanks to Taryn Armstrong, who they call the machine, because he, like, Lee, this is crazy, because there's live feeds, right? There's the television show, but then there's the live feeds that you can pay for and just watch the house guests, like, basically 24-7. Yeah. They stay up, Taryn and his crew that he has on, and basically just watch it all night long. So, because that's when a lot of the story, like, uh, like uh, Lee, Lee doesn't have a minute. So he's no, not no, no, no. Like, I mean, seriously, but then they get together, like what we do, talking about basketball. But they talk about what happened in the Big Brother household, who's making moves, what's happening, and all that. It's so weird that I yeah. and I love it, and it's a weird. I just that's definitely a random weird thing that I look forward to. I'm like, man, I can't wait to find out what happened in the Big Brother household last night. <laughs> Didn't see a second of the TV show, but this is gonna be great. So. A little shout out to Taryn Armstrong there. Amazing. Amazing. Like you think we go on these runs? Like we've been pretty impressive here with our podcast run during the playoffs. Pfft. Can you imagine watching that all night? Oh, no People thanks. just talking to each other, then getting up and talking about them. <laughs> like for a hundred days straight. It's have amazing. you ever done it, Skates? Done like, what? Big Brother? Actually, no, I watched the watched the stream live. I uh, no. The only time I did was when I was into it. I guess sort of yes. Remember they had Big Brother After Dark? Yeah, yeah. They would put it on a channel at like two from like midnight to three, and it would be, I guess, sort of like a live version. Yeah, so sort yeah. of, yes, but not on the internet, like around the clock type thing, no. It's weirdly compelling. Oh, I know. Man, I mean, I'd, when Jackson was a baby, he'd be up all night, and I would just put that on, and I would just be watch, literally watching people play poker, but you don't know what cards they have. They're just... <laughs> Yeah, just literally chatting, <laughs> playing poker, and then they cut to outside where yep. just, uh, just somebody sunbathing, you know, whatever, like or just just hanging out. Very weird. It's weird. Very was weird. it your uh, your your friend Derek? Right, I remember mm -hmm. he was into it there for a couple. Oh of summers. yeah, we yeah. we were very much into Big Brother. Strange, good strange, times. Good great times. times. The Big Brother <laughs> podcast, the RHAP family. All right, did uh, just one thing on Big Brother. Yeah. Did they ever use the British voiceover guy for the Big Brother uh, here? <laughs> because he was he became kind of famous in England because he had. He, I think he's from Newcastle, so it was a dear thirty five in the Big Brother house. Uh, yeah, I thought, <laughs> yeah. No, he they, didn't come over. 
I don't think so. But it's funny you say that. Uh, Love Island, which is a whole other weird reality yeah. type of series and show. They, they, I think it started in UK, or that's where it, like the popularity exploded. The guy that did yeah. their voice, he's very funny. Like he's really, really, he's got a unique voice and he's very funny. And he is now doing the American version. Like they mm. obviously were like, we got to keep this guy because he's he like almost makes the show because he's making jokes about all the people in it and stuff like that. So, yeah, I don't know. If the, I think I just think Julie Chen sort of would always do the voiceover, mm. right, JD? Unless I'm uh, afraid. No, 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 there was a, a guy. guy. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Anyway, yeah. well, what are we talking about? What have I done here? It's not my fault. Let's get to the next one. Yeah, sure. Let's get to the next one. But it is an interesting conversation because we have comments uh, in the in the chat here. All right. Hey, I don't watch basketball at all. I just listen to No Ducks. I, po- I know. Podcasts. I think more and more people are doing this type of thing. Sure. I do. Yeah. Pod- podcasts are killing the main event. Side dish <laughs> is killing is killing the main dish. Ethan Sherwood Strauss is going to write another article about ratings being bad in the NBA. Ratings are fine, everybody. We just got to figure out the balance. This new world, got to figure out how to monetize it. Figure out how to monetize the YouTube, the League Pass. People are watching. People are consuming podcasts. Obviously, that's where the money's at. Uh, anyways, we'll get we'll get back to basketball with this one. What's up, No Dunks? I'm a huge Raptors fan from Riverdale, Toronto. JD. You gotta love this. From. Yeah. You gotta love this email. Wow, who is it? Is it my brother? Who is it? Is, is it Derek? No, it's a man it's by the name of Cooper. Oh, I know Cooper. Hey, Cooper. <laughs> hey, Coop. <laughs> oh, Riverdale Coop. <laughs> <laughs> um, Riverdale. I think that's where old Hainzer's from. He loves going down to the Danforth. Anyway, I think OG is the most valuable long-term player the Raptors have. Whoa, he's a great no-no yes guy, as he seems to hit big-time shots you don't really expect him to make until they drop. However. He also tends to be a yes, yes, no guy where it feels like twice a game he'll grab a big offensive board or make a great post move. He'll beat his man and then miss the layup or get fouled and miss both free throws. My question is, can you think of other players past or present who are no, no, yes, slash yes, yes, no guys who feel like, man, it feels like I'm high right now, who feel like (laughs) much better finishers in low quality chances than high quality ones. Thanks, Cooper. I'm going to stay with a current guy. Marcus Smart is that guy for me. Oh, you just took yeah. my answer. Incredible. Yeah, we just well, you we just watched seven games of the Raptor killer Marcus Smart, so that, yeah. that would make sense. Well, we're on the same wavelength here. Big, big shots from the outside. On the inside, meh, uh, not so much. He's uh, he is definitely more of a he's more of a no no yes guy. I don't I don't think he takes yeah, a lot sure. of bad shots on the inside. Or he takes he doesn't take take and miss a lot of shots on the inside he's more no no yes than yes yes no if we're going to get into the the nitty-gritty here but yeah he's he definitely stands out and and going back uh watching highlights trying to figure out a guy who who did this in the past Steph Curry had a lot of those moments Mm -hmm. uh, because he's Mm -hmm. so good yeah you know there's the classic Steve Kerr when the shot goes up what the oh yeah nice shot shot running his hands through (laughs) through his hair so yeah those are those are my answers yeah, I am uh, smart. I imagine even for Celtics fans, he's one hell of a roller coaster to watch. Um, because he makes winning plays and he can hit clutch shots, like Pat said, he can hit threes. You have games where he hits five or six, but he has a lot of like sort of WTF moments too. You're like, what are you doing, man? Like, but that's just the Marcus Smart package. So that was my yeah. Answer. Marcus Smart has a lot of yes, 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 no moments on defense where it's like this guy is playing incredible right. defense and throws you a ridiculous flop, and you're like, come yeah. on, man, you just had him, you had him right yeah. there. Yeah, but uh, he, he's fun to watch. Like the guy took 22 threes in a game and you're like, Marcus Smart took that many. He made 11. Yes, yeah. yes, yes. No, 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 no. Yes. It's all the same. He went 11 of 22. Yeah. yeah. Oh, my yeah. goodness. I forgot about that. Uh, what about Jamario Moon for the uh, for the Raptors? <laughs> oh, my God. It was me. Wow. He, he, he was what a roller coaster he was. His first couple of games in uh, in the NBA, he was actually pretty decent. And then he just started getting a little bit too carried away and took some just awful shots. But then he also made some of those crazy, crazy ones as well. He, uh, because he remember Have you moved when- on. You've moved on from Carlos Delfino to Jamario Moon. <laughs> yeah, I, 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 did, I, I didn't. Uh, I didn't sort of hate Jamario Moon the way I hated Carlos Delfino. But yeah, it was I, just. Okay. It was just like he would. He would hit some of those shots because he called himself the Scotty Pippen. He that was who he modelled himself on, and he hit some threes. He wore the number thirty three. And I remember his first couple of games, he was blocking shots, and I'm like. I mean, he kind of has got the Scotty Pippen yeah, sort of uh, yeah. repertoire here, but then it just went downhill <laughs> so quickly. <laughs> Scotty Pippen. Oh, Scotty yeah. Pippen. 
because because uh, he had bounced around and you know uh he was 33 yeah he played yeah. in europe and he played in you know asia Cleveland. or somewhere like that yeah, yeah. But no but he before he made the nba and it was kind of like oh how yeah. come how come this guy hasn't played in the nba before and then we saw him <laughs> like yeah that's why hasn't he played and then it was just like oh okay we can all see why <laughs> uh, you can uh, still you can still get your uh, uh taste of jamar and moon he's still playing in the basketball tournament every year he's only 40 oh, wow. he's just 40 which i was surprised by but uh you you brought up all the teams that he played for, Lee. I just sent it to JD, so I'm putting him on the spot right now. Right. But I just screen grabbed the list of teams that he played for. It's like a billion teams yeah. that he played for. Yeah. Uh, Isn't he the only guy to play with uh, LeBron, Wade, and Bosh, um, but not when they were together, I think? <laughs> Interesting. You know what I, mean? oh, I didn't know that was a like, thing. Like, he played with LeBron, Cleveland. Yeah, LeBron in Cleveland. Yeah, LeBron in Cleveland. In Cleveland. And Wade in Miami, I think. I think she that's what it yeah. was. Yeah. Yeah. That guy is a Pippin man playing with yeah. all these Jordans. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. What a what a fact. That was, I hope I hope to hell that you don't get well actually done that from Schumann. <laughs> that's a good one. I like yeah. that one. I just remember seeing it one time, but there's oh. the list of teams that he's played for throughout his 18 year career playing internationally and in North America. There's some D League teams Lord. there. Play for the Huntsville Flight. Woo. The Rome Gladiators. Where's yeah, that? Yeah, so that that checks out too because 2007, Chris <laughs> Bosh was there. You know, 2009, Wade was in Miami, and then 2011. Oh, was where was? Oh yeah, 2010. Oh no, uh, no, two, 2009 to 2011, LeBron yeah. was still there for the first. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. No, you got it, man. Yeah. You got it. You know everything about Jamario Moon. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Right. Thanks for throwing that up, JD. Sorry to throw you on the put you on the spot there. Great work, JD. Uh, any other answers to this? Got... Uh, I had Jamario Moon too. I can't oh, believe shit. it. <laughs> Smart Moon. Everybody answers. Uh, all right, next one here. We got a couple more. We're running a little long. Uh, I got into drinking kombucha after hearing about it on the podcast. I bring it to work and, of course, refer to it as the booch. My coworkers found that funny. It's become a funny phrase in the workplace. <laughs> one of them tried booch for the first time himself, shook the bottle hard before opening it resulting in a big mess all over him. I said, you botched the booch. Just like when Lee started choking on his drink in a past episode. Although booch has become workplace lingo, nobody but myself knows that it's a reference to no dunks. Anyway, my question is, do you pay tribute to someone or something in a way that nobody else is really aware of? That's from Cody. Who you got drinking the booch there, Lee Lee. Trey, why don't you get us started though? Yeah, Magic Johnson has given us a lot as basketball fans over the years. Obviously a Hall of Fame player, some major off-the-court moments and work that he's done as well. Lee obviously loves him uh, as the premier tweeter of our generation, uh, some would say. But back in the day, he was a commentator, and I pay tribute to Magic Johnson every time I say, something is back! Because that was Magic Johnson's favorite thing. Take a listen to this clip from uh, Amari Stoudemire's appearance in the dunk contest. If he gets this, like it's gonna this. be crazy. I like this. Oh, he got it! Oh! <laughs> I gotta tell you something is an underrated part. <laughs> yeah, man, you're on the broadcast. Go ahead. I want to chime in with something here. It's the uh, thing I say every year at the dunk contest. Uh, but that's the great thing. They were just waiting for him to say it, basically, right? Yeah. They're like, come on, man, tell us, tell us when it's actually back. I know you said it was back last year <laughs> and the year before and the year before this year. It is back. Oh, that's a great uh, clip. Oh man. I'm well, kind of with magic. I get overexcited for a header as well. For um, sure. Because it was, you looking back, it's it's a header from Steve Nash. <laughs> Definitely everybody in the YouTube chat is like, how did that get a 10? The dunk oh, wasn't that great. Oh, no, it's, it's like header. a totally just normal dunk. Like, it's fine. That's like an eight, maybe. I don't even know for that. <laughs> oh, man. And dome, was that a... I can't remember. Did they take a couple reps to get that? Like the couple. I think that's uh, time number two. Okay. He throws it the first time. Nash kind of goes off to the side with the header. Then they nail it. Okay. That, that was a better header though than Alan Houston's one back in the day. Remember he just sort of. <laughs> uh, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. 
Was that Magic the... did not think the dunk contest was back with that one. <laughs> what, um, what year is that? Is that who wins that one? Is it Josh Smith? Is it, uh... Oh five. I think that makes sense. Yeah, yeah. yeah. He in Denver. He won it. It looked like it was in Denver. I think yeah. it was in Denver. Yeah. And the reason I, I, I'm pretty sure that's right because <laughs> I've told this story before. I was at a dunk contest viewing party. Uh, for some reason, it was in uh, it was in Whitby, Ontario, at, at my buddy Ken's parents' house. We were in the basement, and Ben Rycroft was there. We're obviously uh, all enjoying the dunk contest. <laughs> and I tried because Josh Smith in that dunk contest jumped over somebody sitting in a chair. I think it was Kenyon Martin, if I if I remember correctly. Um, he chucked it up, right? And he, and he down, jumped over him. Anyway, don't know how it came up, but I was like, I, I can jump over you in a chair. And Ben's like, yeah, let's try it. Let's do it. And we're in a basement, so ceilings a little low. Here I go. I run and I jump over him, but I'm like ducking a little bit because I'm going to smoke my head on the basement uh, ceiling. And Ben like refuses to like duck at all, keeps his head super <laughs> stiff. My groin nails him in the head, it, like whips his neck back. And the guy was like injured for the rest of the night. <laughs> it was a thing that happened. And it was that dunk contest. I, I, I'm, I'm like 99% sure I know my buddy Dove or my buddy Ken will, uh, you know, clarify that. But uh, yeah. I was like, Ben, why didn't you duck a little bit? He's like, no, you said you could do it. And I was like, I could. I, I just, <laughs> I had to duck, so you should have ducked a little bit. I thought Ben Rycroft was a soccer guy. Why wasn't he pulling the Nash header? Yeah, he, he's a big soccer guy. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Lee, you got Jamario Moon facts. I got Ben. <laughs> yeah, that's impressive. That's impressive. Canadian soccer specifically. Really knows the stuff. Oh, man. Oh, wow. Yeah, what a story that was. Oh, wow. <laughs> that's a good story. Though. I can't that. Yeah, yeah, show. back, please. Yeah, Let's see yeah. Again. <laughs> oh, hey, I'm going to jump over you, Lee. Hey, you gonna, did. Uh, you did. In, uh, oh, in, I did uh, jump over you. Yeah. <laughs> that's sort of my thing. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I jumped over you way down in New Orleans. <laughs> <laughs> oh, boy. Uh, uh, any, any other answers to this? Yeah, I'll jump in here okay. quick. Um, my old team. My old softball team, the Rounders, I give them a tribute every time I open a pack of sunflower seeds, grab a fistful and throw them in the back of my mouth, <laughs> just like I used to on the foot on the softball field. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Yeah, I crack open a pack of Davids every once in a while and mm. the salt hits your throat. Oh, yeah, nothing <laughs> like it. <laughs> Sounds like you're swallowing them whole. I don't know why. <laughs> oh, come on. I love, I love a good sunflower seed. Yeah, I, sure. I grab them at the... Uh, Supermarket a couple of weeks back, definitely the highlight of my uh, of my pandemic here. Yeah, those sunflower <laughs> seeds. I had, you know, I, I like putting about 150 to 200 <laughs> in my mouth, 75 per cheek. Um, yeah, I only stop eating sunflower seeds when the insides of my mouth feel raw from yeah. all <laughs> just dissolving into the sides. Oh. <laughs> Great at a baseball game, though. Oh, baby. Mm. Any other answers? Uh, uh, well, you know, I often pay tribute to uh, things that I grew up with watching on TV in Australia or just Australianisms that I know that might go over your guy's head. But I know there's plenty of Australians in the audience and they love them and they hear them and they, uh, and they catch up on them. Like a couple of weeks, or I don't know, last week, you know, whenever, whenever JD has a comment on the show and he pops in his little screen, it reminds me of this character that used to be on this uh, entertainment show on a Saturday night in Australia called Dickie Knee. Hey, hey, it's Saturday, it was called. It used to pop up and just make funny comments and then just leave. Mm -hmm. uh, and so I used to do that. And I also talked about when, when Trey had the, the album out the other day, uh, the Kurt Vile album, I was talking about Molly Meldrum. Molly Meldrum is a famous uh, <laughs> entertainment musician reporter in Australia who used to have a segment on that show called Molly's Melodrama. And, the, and it was funny because he was so fun. But they used the the the, uh, the rest of the show used to just rag on him the whole time when he was trying to present some stuff. But no, uh, he was a famous guy. Like he knows, you know, he knows Madonna and Michael Jackson and Elton John and everyone like that. <laughs> this guy's famous. Uh, oh, he's famous. He's great. <laughs> And then, uh, and then also, you know, when I just throw in some cricket references that I know that again, yeah. most most people, most of our audience aren't going to get, but there's a couple out there that get it, and uh, that's good enough. As long as one or two people get it, then it's worth it. Any gag is worth it. So yeah, paying, give us a paying tribute to Australia. <laughs> yeah, Australia, yeah. Australianisms. Yeah, okay. some British yeah. stuff in there as well. Okay. Yeah. yeah. You um, I noticed yesterday's podcast. You said root. 
Yeah, 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 yeah. I know you've talked about that before, but you didn't, you, didn't, you didn't even smile. You said it like, uh, you know, I'm going to root on the Nuggets, as I think is what yeah, you're saying. Yeah, yeah, I, I did. And see, so sometimes that just happens. It's like it just becomes a part of the uh, the language. But I could never say that in Australia. I could never say, oh, I was rooting for the Nuggets. Yeah, they're like, what? What are you saying like a yank for? I'm right, saying, yeah, right. I know. Sorry, sorry. Sorry, <laughs> sorry Molly. Sorry. <laughs> Do yourself a favor and uh, Google Molly Meldrum. Yeah. Not what you're expecting. No, uh, sure. well, I'd, love to, I'd love to see a photo of uh, if JD can work his magic here again. I mean, JD, when you said Dickie Molly, Nick. I didn't even know Molly was a guy. I thought it was a woman. I mean, mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. Nah, Molly Meldrum. <laughs> he's, a, he's a real he's two name guy. Yeah. Uh, he is. He is. Yeah. <laughs> Anything? Okay. Okay. Uh, okay. okay. <laughs> he's, he's, he's seen some snakes. That guy. <laughs> All right, we incredibly, we incredibly have um, a few more emails still to get to, but first, another quick break here. Sorry, I was uh, trying to figure out how to spell Molly Meldrum. How do you spell it? Molly? Molly? Molly, Molly, like the Molly. Molly, 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 Yeah. Oh man, I thought oh. you were saying Molly the entire time. <laughs> Take a Molly on saying Molly. Yeah. <laughs> Last time I saw Molly was Tiger Woods in Scotland. It was raining. <laughs> well, somebody find right. a picture and send it all to right, me. Right, I got to read an ad right now. So uh, <laughs> <laughs> I love my high student loan payment. Said no one ever. <laughs> Nailed it. Nailed it. <laughs> If your student loan payment is too high, it's possible refinancing with Earnest could help you lower your monthly payments. Checking your new rate is fast and easy. Just send, sorry, just answer a few questions online. It only takes two minutes and then you'll get a personalized rate estimate without affecting your credit score. That's big. And there's no origination fee or any other fees. Plus the internet loves Earnest's customer service. They're rated 9.4 out of 10 on Trustpilot. Almost makes me wish I still had a student loan so I could use this thing. (laughs) That's a lie. I wouldn't wish my student loan debt on my worst enemy. (laughs) Now you can get a $100 cash bonus when you refinance a student loan with earnest.com slash no dunks. Once again, you get a $100 cash bonus when you refi your student loan at earnest.com slash no dunks. Not available in all states. Visit earnest.com slash no dunks for more details. Get a pencil. You're going to want to write this down. Terms and conditions apply. Earnest student loan refinance loans are made by Earnest Operations, LLC, NMLS. Uh, number one, two, oh, four, <laughs> nine, or one, seven. You got that? Uh, California financing law license number six, oh, five, four, seven, eight, eight. 303 Second Street, Suite 401N, San Francisco, California, 94107. Visit earnest.com for a full list of licensed states. Can you give me that suite number again? <laughs> I missed it. That's Did a I get in there? N. Oh, okay. Thank you. Thank you. A few things in life as great as paying off that student loan. Oh, such a great thing. I mean, I, I, I can remember the click going, oh my God, God, that done. Um, cause I had that as well. Oh, you're right. I would have liked a little earnest in my life back then, JD. It mm-hmm. sounds, uh, sounds like this could help some people out there. Let's go check that out. Um, all right. Do we find a photo of Molly or Molly? Yeah. Or Molly or it yeah. What, what do we it's got? It's in the you're chat. It's, okay. 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 Yeah. Oh, I can't wait. I mean, I, now I, let's just, let's just get to Molly. Let's see what this guy <laughs> is. <laughs> <laughs> you, some of you've been looking up. I guess Tassie looked it up, or Trey. Uh, like I, I didn't click on anything. I didn't search for it. So I'm so excited to see what this this mm. dude that yeah, knows Madonna look. looks like. Yeah. Okay. This guy knows Madonna. <laughs> Here we go. Madonna. Oh, this guy knows Madonna. There he is. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right. You didn't expect it. That yeah, the guy cow- cowboy knows hat Madonna. has been his thing. He's 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 worn that forever. Uh yeah, he's he's actually older than I thought. He's 77 years old. But like when I was growing up, Molly was just on TV just forever, you know? So um, <laughs> yeah. He's got some stories to tell, old Molly. Try to oh, get him I on bet. the podcast. Oh, Popping packs with Molly Meldon. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we got two more. Whatever emails. that means. <laughs> yeah. Hey, no Badunkadunks. 
<laughs> Long time listener, first time emailer. I was bumping some classic no dunks this week in my car. Stopped perfectly at a red light, windows down. My man TK ripped out a belting, <laughs> hey up. Much to the alarm of the driver in the car next to me. <laughs> Couldn't help myself. At first, I was embarrassed, but immediately leaned into the situation, keeping full eye contact with the driver next to me, letting out an AO of my own in full chorus of the No Dunks crew. No regrets. <laughs> what was the time you played off a seemingly embarrassing situation by leaning into the moment? Turnpike, loafs of rye, doorknob. Hashtag Black Lives Matter. That's from Matthew Kitchener, bracket, bracket, his finest. Oh, Devin in the UK sending that in. Wait, oh, shout out is his name Matthew Robert. or Devin? <laughs> Matthew. Oh, yeah. yeah that's total, total <laughs> on my part. He's, his name is Matthew Kitchener from Devin in the UK. Gotcha. gotcha. Devin, uh, Devin the city. Right. In the right. UK. Lee, you yeah. got a, you got a photo of you really standing in Devon, I assume. <laughs> uh, not handy, but I'll see what I got in the archives. All right. All right. Uh, well, you look for that. I'll answer this. Um, doing this starters television show on NBA TV, like I started last year, uh, like I started many podcasts and shows over the years with the Good Morning Sweet World, the Good Evening Sweet World. There were a few times in the live television days, you guys might remember. The old voice cracked like crazy <laughs> off the top. There were at least one or two that it just was like, a, oh, this guy just hit puberty on the good evening, sweet world. I'm trying to hit the high notes there. And it's like, oh, we're on live television. That's sort of <laughs> embarrassing, but going to lean right into this and then start making some jokes about it or whatever. So that's what first came to mind for me. The old, the old voice cracking as a grown ass man live on television at the start of the show. Cause I hate setting the, th like, I love <laughs> setting the tone, right? That's just why we do it. Get some energy going. And it's just like, Oh boy, here we go. It's going to be one of these uh, episodes for us, but that's my answer. I thought maybe your lean in would be the time you did a whole show wearing an eye patch. <laughs> oh, yeah, I mean, like, this guy had a straight up eye patch. <laughs> yeah. That sucked. Uh, <laughs> I had my eye infection. Yeah, no, that's a good point. That's a good leaning into it. Just made it into a whole uh, whole look there. I that's sort very of cool. didn't even mind how I looked with an eye patch. <laughs> I'm completely honest. <laughs> so, you so, pulled it off harder than anyone could have assumed. No I didn't think it looked that bad. Um, uh, yeah, as you might be aware, as you might be aware, we got an email here. Actually, September nineteenth is International Talk Like a Pirate Day. FYI, uh, okay. so might have to pull out an All NBA Sweet. Pirate Team pretty soon. Okay. Anybody I'll got one? Eye, I'll find the eye patch. Anybody got one off the top? Just give me one. Just give me one. Just what? one you want pirate name. Oh, one pirate, pirate pun. pun. One uh, pirate pun for all the homies. Uh, Eric Gord. <laughs> <laughs> Jamario. <laughs> <laughs> all right. That was better than one. Well done. Well done. All right. uh, Plank Whitaker. <laughs> not bad. Not bad. Not bad. Not bad. Uh, Loot Williams. Mm, I don't know. That's all right. That's all right. That's all right. Yeah. Yeah. Right. yeah. yeah. Uh, Jolly Roger Mason Jr. <laughs> do uh, do pirates say Jolly Roger? That that's what, like, uh, I think that's what the skull and crossbones oh. flag is called. Oh, the, I didn't know that. I don't know if that's true. I just know it's a pirate term. <laughs> it's certainly a pirate term. I believe you. I believe you. Any other answers to this? Uh, <laughs> no. well, well, I'll no, start. How about this? The pun gun. We've leaned into the pun gun. Yeah. Yeah. The pun's being ultimately embarrassing. I'll jump in uh, myself because it also relates to uh, NBA TV. When we first started working there, we were having our first meeting with the, the Turner family at a conference table and Lee introduced himself as Lee Ellis yeah. from Pakistan. So I, uh, I jumped in and uh, I, I had to, I had to, you know, support Lee. And I, and I said, well, oh, that, that joke got you right in the Karachi. Uh, Pakistan. Yeah. Okay. I didn't jump in. We all just had an awkward silence there and, uh, and it, it went over smoothly, I guess. <laughs> oh, yeah. I think Trey gave me some sympathy laughs, and that was about it. Yeah. <laughs> no way. It's not like me. Oh, yeah. Any other answers? Uh, <laughs> no, 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 we can just don't... wrap this up. I, mean, yeah, like... I was trying to think of one. I don't have one in particular, but anytime you do the stumble or the trip and then you just sort of shadow box or something yeah. up, you know, that's, that's really the best one I could come up with. So, yeah, that's it. 
Not really. really yeah. If you, if you, uh, the odd time, you know, I've hit something while I'm running out there, like out in the residential area, trip on a sidewalk or crack or something. Yeah. You go down, you got to get up, go back and look at it. Yeah. You got to <laughs> go look. I don't know why. You could just keep running, but yeah. you got to see and got to point at it. <laughs> it's like, it's like shooting an air ball. You got to look at your hand. Or yeah. You gotta air right, right. Yeah. Something's wrong. It's yeah, not me. Yeah. Something else is wrong. <laughs> Trey, do you have anything for this one? Just botched handshakes. You know, anytime you botch a handshake, you know, maybe you go for the handshake, they go for the fist pound. Yeah. You really want to like lean into how bad it was. <laughs> let's try that again, buddy. You know, maybe you'll yeah. go fist the hand, then you'll go, <laughs> yeah, let's just hug, whatever it is. But if you botch a handshake, you got to make it even more awkward so that everyone knows it was totally on purpose that you did that. Right, right. Great answers. It took a while right. to get there, but great answers. Great answers. <laughs> Okay, final one before we go. Greetings. Listen, Lee, this one's for you. Okay, listen, Lee, no issue with your Bud Light bashing, but your Corona aversion is misplaced. You think that Corona tastes different because it is now owned by Anheuser-Busch? Well, actually, let's get some straight facts out of the way. Constellation brand bought the Corona brand from Anheuser-Busch in 2013. So if as you suspect, they are doing something different in the recipe, making it taste different than it was Anheuser-Busch that was making it the way you liked it. Maybe if you drank some more piss-like beer, then they wouldn't have had to sell and Snoop wouldn't have to wear socks at the beach. Anyway, I'm off to fantasize about drinking coffee in my kitchen. Good luck to all the horses. That's from Leo. <laughs> Another email here from San Diego. Got a lot of listeners in San Diego. Mm. So yeah, Leo... Uh, he, Leo setting you straight here on your like timing of possibly a Corona recipe changing because you've been blaming yeah, it on yeah. basically Bud. Yeah, like, yeah, or yeah. Answer boy. Like, uh, yeah. And now I reminded myself that I was supposed to look. I had like a couple of DMs last time I talked about how it tasted like crap from people saying, "Hey, man, I work in the industry, and you're right." And now I can't find oh, them. I was going, "Yeah, oh, I, wow." Yeah, I got sloppy there. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Listen, the thing is. Okay, Leo, you know, relax. Just calm down, man. Just go to the beach around San Diego, you know. Uh, <laughs> um, it tastes different. It tastes bad, and it tastes worse than it used to taste, Corona. And uh, that's 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 a straight fact for you, boy. Uh, <laughs> really good, and now it's not so good. So I don't know what happened, but it changed. That's what I do know. And uh, Corona, I think that's a like it became a cool drink in the like late nineties. Like, oh, Corona, you know, lime and no lime, whatever. You, but people are drinking Corona, and they got too big, and they cheaped out on the uh, ingredients somewhere along the line. I don't know whose fault it is, but that's what happened. That's a fact based on absolutely nothing but my personal experience. Okay. <laughs> hey, Leo, take that lime and stick it in your bottle. That's a fact from Leo. Yeah. Well, I'm glad we got that in. <laughs> that was, made that clear. Okay, that's it for today's Beach Step and Podcast. We will be back tomorrow morning with a brand new podcast breaking down game one of the Eastern Conference Finals and game seven, baby, between the Nuggets and the Clippers. Keep your emails and your comments coming for our next Beach Step and Podcast. Email them in, no dunks at theathletic.com. Tweet them in at no dunksing. Don't forget to check out the other great pods of the Athletic Network. The Athletic NBA Show, The Daily Ding, all of the classics they got going. If you haven't already, you can subscribe to The Athletic right now for $1 a month. Go to theathletic.com slash no dunks to take advantage of that offer, which again, I'm convinced, got to be a typo. There's no way we've got that great a deal. A dollar a month to subscribe to The Athletic. Incredible. Finally, if you listen to No Dunks on iTunes, please. Leave your boys a five-star rating and review. It'll eventually help us take over the world. So thank you so much. Clipper Bros. You heard it here first. Have a great time. Turn up. Love you guys. Awesome. Thanks for joining us. And remember, No Dunks has a lot of fans in San Diego. At least two, anyway. Haley and Leo. And it's the day, people. You could stay.